after the truck wouldn't start in the last video, I decided it was time to pull the engine. The next day I was swinging from my picker. <laughs> uh, of course he makes fart noises as soon as I turn the camera on. So, that was inside this valve cover. And we have yet to pull the other one. Let's see how these are. Yeah, I'd say there's a little corrosion going on. Oops. No. All right, so now we're going to open this one up literally for the first time. Since God knows when. Yeah, it's uh, just as crappy as the other side. I don't know what the problem was. Yeah. There's some oil in that's uh like chocolate sauce it's good put it on your grilled cheese yeah, yeah. about to rip open this engine amongst the obvious rust on the push rods i noticed this one is bent so i guarantee you that was part of my problem with this engine not running well all right i got the heads off the engine and the intake I was really expecting to find a burnt valve in here, but nothing. All the valves are intact and none of them burnt. So all of my loss of compression must have been through the valve seats and the rings. That's one nasty freaking engine. All this oil and grease and yeah. I do not regret pulling this thing out. So today we're at Summit Racing in Arlington, Texas to pick up my brand new crate engine. Heh, <laughs> you knew better. We're actually at Prime Salvage Yard. Would you expect anything else? The channel is called This Old Junk. This is the same place that I got the 1964 Impala from. So before we go any further, I want to explain my thinking here. Rebuilding that 360 with any kind of power was going to be expensive. Uh, intake alone, plus a four barrel, plus headers, and everything else that goes into uh, making these old carbureted engines fast, well, it's expensive like anything else. Plus, I uh, wasn't too sure on what the block would look like or the heads, and I uh, knew there'd be a lot of machine work involved. I considered salvaging a carbureted 302 or even a first generation, well, not really first generation, but the uh, Fox Body HO 5 liter 302s with OBD1. Um, I looked at the 4.6 liters, and they're uh, not the best for swap options. 5.4 Tritons, well, they have the, uh, the head issues where you change the spark plugs and the heads break, and then you're doing a head job. Coyote is very, very high on my wish list, but unfortunately I can't afford 10 grand for an engine, plus a transmission to put behind it, plus a rear end to handle it all, plus the engine management system. Finding a salvage Mustang would be best, but even still, the market on those are about 8 grand, and I would have to have a place to tear it apart, which I don't. So, still hoping for a Coyote, but it's probably going to have to be, you know, seven, eight years down the road when their uh, secondary market really drops in price on those. Cummins Swap was really high on my list also. I uh, ran the numbers on that. What would it cost? Where would I find one? What kind of power would I get? Uh, and everything that goes along with that. So that's when I finally decided to do what I'm doing here. That is a 5.3 liter LS engine out of a 2001 Tahoe. I got the engine, the ECM, a complete wiring harness that was not cut, and a 4L60 transmission, all for $1,000. I didn't bother recording uh, tearing this LS down to this point. I mean, there's 
literally thousands of videos of guys doing that. So if you're going to go watch LS tear down, there's plenty. However, I thought I'd let you be here when I open up the valve cover. This, you're going to see inside the first time, uh, just like I am. So, let's see what we got, shall we? Hey, all right. The valve train is intact. It's a little bit dirty in here, but that's to be expected on any used engine. I'm sure uh, my Jeep engine wouldn't look any different. We drive it every day. All the springs are intact. Uh, so far... Not going to complain. No metal. Then I checked the oil. Didn't, I mean, it looked like it was probably ready for an oil change, but it didn't look terrible. So, sigh of relief on this side, but, uh, you know, the only way to really know what this engine looks like is to open up the other side, pull the heads, and open up the bottom end. So, I'll see you there. I'm trying a new method for uh, keeping my bolts together. Just running a little bit of a, a painter's tape around the threads and keeping the bolts and the uh, accessory that goes on. This seems to hold it pretty well. Should keep the threads from getting damaged. And when I want to paint it, I can paint it together and keep the heads of the bolts whatever color that I'm painting the accessory and not have to wonder what went where later. It's the first time doing this, so... Let you know how it works out. I went ahead and pulled all the accessories off while I was uh, working my way around the engine. But it looks like I've just about got these ready to pull. Here we go. Aha. Survey says... All valve springs intact. Set this valve cover down. Looks about like the other side. So from this end, the valve train looks to all be intact, which is a good sign. Let's go further, shall we? All right, let's check it. Yep, you're seated. Okay, easy on the trigger. Okay, get it lined up a little bit better. There we go. Okay, take your gun. Nope, finger off the trigger. Okay, I got the gun. I'm going to put it on the workbench in line with the other ones. All right, I got all the head bolts out of this left head. I, wait, hold on. My left, the engine's right. You know, why don't I just say curbside head? That's what I'm used to dealing with. So the curbside head is now loose and fixing to come off. And you will get first look at this along with myself. Crud. All right, you know what? This ain't working. All right, I got the heads off. Went ahead and vacuumed and blew out the cylinders with some shop air. Wanted to get all the dirt and gunk out for uh, barring the engine over. Barred it over again. There's not really much wear to the cylinders. In fact, none that I can actually feel. There's uh, no lips, no grooves. Little bit of heat uh, ring around that cylinder. 
overall, I'm still pretty happy here. Uh, I don't see any major failure. It's looking like this engine was probably running when it was pulled out. So if you're still here, then I assume you're not on the way to my house with pitchforks and torches and the like for heresy. Uh, the fact of the matter is, guys been putting Chevy engines and Fords since uh, forever. And I don't necessarily view this as a permanent option, though it may very well be. I uh, look at it as a uh, option to get me through until I get what I want. And a lot of the upgrades I'm going to be doing to the radiator and electric fan and electric fuel pump. And uh, plus this really gets me just working on the truck and driving it at the same time. Uh, until maybe one day I can get my hands on a coyote that I can afford. And when I do, it's three bolts in a weekend to pull it out. So it is what it is. The stage I'm at now is at cleaning. I've got a new valve train for the uh, heads here. That'll be going in shortly, but I'll spare you all that detail. But rest assured, I will show you the finished product in a future video. Thanks for watching. See you soon.